Okay, so we are in Los Angeles. This is 2015 and the month of February. Okay. So what are holographs, holograms like the way I per perceive them? Okay, so what happens is everything on the planet here is alien. Uh, all the wars are alien wars. They just come down to people here. And the aliens control people. Uh, there are agencies out there that control people with aliens in them. So I don't get too much into government stuff, okay? Uh, then there's time travelers. You probably have seen people that you maybe seen in uh, Hollywood that look like they could be time travelers and they were in other movies previously. Looking a little different, but uh, in the black and white days and now they show up, you know, and now they're in color. So everything here is like a copy and paste. So history does repeat itself. And your, I'll, I'll describe where I live, okay? I, I don't live in your time-based reality. So I'm not controlled by your time. I live outside of time. So when, when did you get here? When did I get here? Uh, as far as, you know, I was born into a body. So basically, you know, that's when I got here. But I don't keep track of time. So your, your time uh, allows you to have, uh, like, history points and occurrences happening to you in time. And normally when that happens, is that that's your DNA. So you're coded with the DNA that works in time. When you're born, you're born under the planet's uh, signs, okay? And the signs that you're born under will typically control your life. Not always, but typically it's a good indication. And that's because you're being controlled by aliens on a timeline or timelines that they're putting you onto. Does that make sense to any of you? That just sucks. <laughs> Yeah, and so how do you get out of, how do you stop being abducted? Okay, so you don't get on the timelines. Well, you need to get your emotions cleared, cleared out of you. Because they like your emotions. When you're happy, when you're sad, they're connecting to you through your emotions. And they abduct you. You don't know about abduction. But uh, like I started to say earlier, you, were, you are here physically uh, with your body that you have, unless you're a clone. I can get into that later. Okay? But you're here every 10 minutes, then you get switched out. A different alien race controls you every 10 minutes. And they have to recreate the holographic illusion that you're living in. So you might be saying, well, I've never been abducted, right? There's probably people here saying, I haven't seen a spaceship or a white light or the greys walk in my bedroom at night and abduct me or get the, uh, you know, different apparatuses put on you you know, sperm and, you know, sperm, semen, everything else, and eggs, you know, all that stuff happens to everybody here. So what happens is, is that you're recreated every 10 minutes from the darkness, which is the alien's agenda, and they take part of your spirit energy and recreate your whole body and your whole experience. So you have now a database stored inside of you from your past uh, lives of being here. Now, the abductions are just very simple. You lose your keys, right? That's an abduction point. You have deja vu. That's an abduction point. Because you're now seeing timelines. So all, all the timelines that you're living on, you're, you're not only here right now, but you could be out in a thousand timelines in the same room, being controlled by aliens hearing me talk, but it won't be me. But it'll look like me, okay? And so you're always in the control of the alien agenda. And for a lot of people, that's very scary because they don't know what they can do about it. Because you really, you know, unless you get your emotions cleaned out of you and, and the judgments inside of you, in your DNA, you're, 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 you're stuck. <coughs> then you have barcodes put on you upon birth, and it just kind of goes on and on and on. You can do timeline crashes if you have an event in your life that's uh, going south, you know, you keep having a, a similar situation. You could have a barcode on that to be re-abducted over and over again for that similar situation. They can copy and paste timelines. So if you have a problem, and maybe you uh, twisted your, your, you know, your right shoulder, right? And it hurts. Well, they can take that because they're living out of your pain energy. And they can replicate you on, on a thousand timelines. Oh, so you're basically more uh, attractive if you're more emotional. Yeah, see, like like yeah, the, the more emotional you are, the more you're going to be abducted. Wow. Okay, that's why you want to be in the present moment. You want to be in the now. 
you don't want to be out on timelines. And the only way to get off of a lot of timelines are to be out of emotions. And then what I'll do is uh, a clearing here for emotions for people. Uh, think of a situation in your life that you've had. And it'll work for the moderator back here too, so just think of something. A, a, a negative situation, uh, being upset or whatever, just think of it right now and I'll clear it from you. Everybody have one? You ready? Now look at it again. And it should be pretty much neutralized. So see, source energy doesn't have a memory of, uh, or history. See, in source energy, everything works in the present moment. And there's nothing from the past. Only your DNA stores that. So the aliens gave you this wonderful recording <laughs> material inside of you for your DNA and RNA to, re to hang on to your past, to have that recycled in your life. That's why you can't get out of here. You keep trying to get out each time you're born over again. And, and you have a different body, but the body you choose, which is kind of like free choice, free will for you, but a store full of DNA that you would like to try to you know, have a life of doing something according to what the, is inside of the DNA. And then from there, you're on an emotional roller coaster ride. So what you see physically in front of you uh, will be programming your DNA. What you hear also programs you. So let's do another emotional clearing. So ready? Think of something that's bothered you. Here we go. Now do another one. Ready? If I do 10 of these, you're going to feel really good. Is your body relaxing now a little more? Yeah. Here we go. One more. And one more. One more. One more. Okay. And how are you feeling? That's the lady here. Feel a little more relaxed? Okay. So what happened was that one page in your book of whatever you're dealing with, maybe it's a fear, we'll say, right? So, so that page was taken out. You still have fear in you, but that one page that you experience is no longer with you, and peace is in, in the place of the fear. So now you don't have any, any real record of, of that trauma, the drama, or whatever you went through, because you're now dealing with source energy, which doesn't judge anything. It's just this is energy. So the light never created darkness, and the darkness only creates false light, which I call the light of the darkness. So that's what you see in all the churches, all the different religions here, uh, the people who are doing uh, different types of, uh, I would say magic, healings, whatever. They're using the light of the darkness energies to maybe help somebody or to hook you up to the aliens. So it gets to be worse as you start doing more spiritual work on yourself because you have to get that information out of a book. And that comes from, say, the Akashic Records. It comes from the universal mind energy. And this is all alien stuff is mind. There's no such thing as thought in source energy. So the basic problem is why you're here is because you're thinking. <laughs> and the thinking that the aliens gave you was in duality. <laughs> So it depends where you are, you know, is that pendulum is swinging? Are you way off on one side and a lot of joy? And the pendulum will come back, and now you're going to be maybe in extreme sadness, and eventually it'll start to balance out if you're lucky, if you can, you know, work on yourself enough, or just do some clearings that I have, and you're, you're centered instantly. Anybody have any pain in here? Body pain? Okay, how many people? Okay, I want you just to kind of visualize your pain or think about your pain, uh, just so I can, you know, where to release energy from. So here we go, ready? So I'll just start stepping my fingers here. <coughs> I'm just clearing the pain out of you right now. Pain's going through my body to source energy being neutralized. Okay, how's your pain? Improving. Improving, okay. Um, are we down to about half pain? Yeah. Half, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, ready? You want some more? Okay, how's your pain now? Better? Yeah. 20%. 20% more? Okay. There. So, this is how source energy works. There's no uh, channeling, there's no, you know, calling the possum god up there or whatever, you know, is outside of yourself. Anything outside of yourself is going to be alien energies. So when you start praying, you become prey. So the P-R-E-Y that you're doing 
or A-Y turns into P-R-E-Y. You see, they, they want you because you're having a problem, a situation. So when you ask something outside of yourself for help and assistance, now they know that you have a problem. Now you're hooked up to their mind control patterns. So how many people in here see numbers like 1111 or 222 or just numbers that are kind of common? So you go, wow, this must be really a great spiritual number. I see it all the time when I'm driving my car house and I see 1111 on a license plate in front of me. Man, I must be really connected, right? Well, yeah, that's an alien program that you're dealing with. So just think your, your, your clocks may be in your bedroom someplace, right, or on the dash of your car, right, on your clock radio or whatever, you know, when you're, you're driving and all of a sudden you have the urge to move to see what time it is. You really don't care what time it is, right? But all of a sudden you get this remote control program, moving your body, right, moving your head down, and then now you look at the clock, and oh yeah, that's their validation that they have you hooked up. Any questions? Yes? I have a question, because I'm trying to visualize <laughs> the reality the way that you, you see it for us. So we're just little kind of like cut and paste little computer programs running around that they're overlapping different and weaving them in different ways that pleases them. Yeah, no, that's a good way of putting it, yes. Yeah, so, so you're under their control and you're doing what they want you to do, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and you can get, and you, you can get placed onto a timeline because your thoughts control your reality. Mm -hmm. The darkness of your thoughts, mm -hmm. okay, their energy, the alien energies control your reality and when you think about it, they can and will put you on a timeline. So, and it's sort of like a square dance, kind of like change your partner, change your alien that controls yeah. you and they... Every 10 minutes a different alien race or a different group or a different alien is controlling you. Yeah, they have to create the hologram. And who sets the rules for that? That's what, that's the rules. Oh. Yes. So are you saying that if we're speaking to like our spirit guides or our spirit guide team, they're not spirit guides at all, they're no. actually aliens? Yeah. But there's some kind of energy outside of yourself. So that's the, that's the problem is that people think they're getting something that's going to be divine <coughs> and this highest source energy out there is coming to you. Well, you already have it inside of you. You, know, you forgot the teachings in Jesus, go with the end. Okay? Very, very simple. Yes, somebody over here? Uh, so you're saying that these are uh, whatever a number or a name of a being is just a symbolic representation of something outside of ourselves that yes. is not empowering us fully to be deriving information from that source rather than our own source. That's correct. Yeah. Now, what you get could be good. It could be great information, but you're still hooked up. It's still not full liberation and empowerment of accessing the treasure of your own yeah. information. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Go with that. that yeah. More, more invaluable to have information coming from within than from any external source, no matter how high or close it is to our vibration, that our vibration is the most essential for us. Yes, that, perfect. I wish you could be in the mic. <laughs> yeah, so, so what I'll do is the mind a hard job. I can only, only show you maybe, maybe three or four things to do. First thing is the mind a hard problem. So uh, I'll talk about meditation. You probably all have meditated if you do it now. So you typically have a guided meditation. So it's taking you out in the Beyondo, you know, they tell you that you gotta go here. You know how, you know, they just don't play music normally, right? They have somebody talking, say, oh, go down to that sacred space or go up to this mountain or whatever, and you're, so your thoughts are bringing you there. Remember, you're in thought now. You're in darkness energy of thought, of mind, of the aliens. And so you're having this guided meditation going somewhere, and then they give you an experience, and see, source energy never gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. Never going to feel really happy and joyful after you have a healing from source energy. Because it doesn't relate to anything. Remember, source energy doesn't judge anything. So how could it give you happiness or sadness or anything like that? It doesn't exist. But the darkness will give you that warm, fuzzy feeling. So you get down with the meditation, you go, boy, that was just really great. I really love that. Well, they hooked you up. They just gave you whatever you thought you needed. They wanted to give you to make you think that you went someplace. And you did. You went out on some timelines someplace. All your thoughts go to timelines. And one timeline can turn into a thousand timelines because they can sell your space. They can sell you and timeshare you on a timeline. 
Yes. Is that what paying attention is about? Well, I guess being in the moment is where you want to be. Well, we, what you're speaking of is when we're paying attention to things. Yeah, yeah, well, something. whatever you uh, focus on, I don't want to sound like a new age, uh, you know, <laughs> type of thing here. What, what you focus on is going to be a timeline, okay? And how many timelines you're going to be hooked up to, and where does that timeline go to? So I'll, I'll do the mind a hard drop for you. So everybody who normally meditates will try to find that sacred space inside of themselves where they can go to to have peace. Is, is that correct? Through meditation? Okay, I can do that for you in 15 seconds. So you go, why meditate for two hours a day? Well, you're wasting a lot of time. Life's precious. Here, Ron. Give me a battery second. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, in source energy, you have to command your spirit because your spirit doesn't know about thoughts. It doesn't listen to your thoughts, okay? You, you need to command it to do something for you. You want to do it out loud, so I'll do it for you when you can see what I'm doing here and then do it yourself afterwards. So here we go. I'm going to command your spirit to take the thoughts inside of your head. That's that monkey mind, the chatter, right? Just keeping you out of your peace and just drop it into your heart center where your spirit lives. What I'll do is count from 10 to 1 backwards and you maybe feel like an elevator dropping down with your thoughts. Well, stop at 5. And you can start to think at 5 and you can still be not in your heart, but you can feel your thoughts like your head's in your, in your throat here. So here we go. Dropping down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Now think. And how many of you can feel your thoughts in your throat? Okay, good. Now we'll go down the rest of the way. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And again, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So right now you are out of time on a timeline. You feel peaceful? Yeah. Okay, now, now uh, I'll do it one more time. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I want you all to try to think. <laughs> you can't think, can you? Well, the reason why you can't think is because source energy doesn't judge anything. Okay? Your thoughts are judging. That's judgment. So, once you really get that, I know, now we'll go a step further with this here, okay? So, not to talk bad about the expos and people that are here doing their practices and they're channeling the Archangel Michael and the other angels, <coughs> right? Uh, who are they channeling? Remember, if you don't get any information in your heart, you can ask your spirit to guide you when you start walking in this duality a little bit, okay? When you're in your heart center. You have to step into darkness a little bit to live here. That's what I'm doing now when I'm talking to you. I have to come in and come out, come in and come out, okay? So, so I don't want to get stuck here, okay? But you're already stuck here. Now if you did, did the mind the heart drop continuously, then the aliens wouldn't want you. <laughs> so why would they want, they couldn't, they couldn't do anything with you. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you think, they got, ah, oh, there we go, this guy's really, really happy, we got him now on a timeline, right? Then they'll sub the timeline to meet the other aliens, and now you're out there in, you know, 10,000 timelines because you're really happy. Or it could be the opposite, you're really sad. So you want to do the mind of heart drop to get into the present moment. And as you start doing it more and more and more, you're going to want to get a day planner to have with you because you're going to be a little spacey, not, not being in time, right? Your friends will say, where were you? You're supposed to be at 1 o'clock. And now it's like 4, you know, you go, well, oh, I was just in peace. And they're in duality. So, any questions? We're going to now do it together first here, then we'll ask you a question. So, okay, I want you all now to say out loud, I now command my spirit, I now command my spirit, to take the thoughts inside of my head, to take the thoughts inside of my head, and drop them down into my heart. And drop them down into my heart. And now we'll count from 10 to 1. And, and when you get doing this, you can, you can just do it like 3, 2, 1, maybe after a week, once you kind of catch on to it, okay? But I'll do it the long way. So, here we go. We'll just count from 10 to 1. So, again, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And how do you feel right now? You feel a little more centered? A little more at peace? Okay, we'll do it. Normally you're going to do it about three times, three or four, so we'll do it one more time. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Now you're in peace. <coughs> can't think. <coughs> now when you get put back into darkness, and the reason why you have to say it out loud because you don't want to be in the darkness energy. You could do it inside of your head, and then you're in the light of the darkness, the same place you're going to be when you meditate, okay? But you want to be conscious, and you want to be off of the timeline, instead of being on a timeline when you're doing your meditations. And you are a long one because you've seen all these events happening because they're guiding you into that. Then at the end of your meditation, they always say, well, you know, move your feet or shake your body or wiggle your toes or whatever to come back here, right? Otherwise, you're going to be all spaced out because you're out of your body. Now, what's the danger of being out of your body? Entities come in. You get full of empty. Now, who's going to be guarding the fort? <laughs> now you're an open vessel for stuff to come into you. So when you hear somebody doing a meditation, what I would say is, run, don't walk. <laughs> and what are they hooking you up to? You know, they may say one thing, and the aliens are up here going to have a feast on you. <laughs> so, question, lady back here. Uh, what about tools like crystals or things like that? that, that Any, anything from the earth, earth would probably be fine. But you want to cleanse it, you want to clear it. Put, it. put it in some water if you can to get the energy out of it. Because you don't want to have somebody's thoughts connected to aliens inside of your little crystal that you bought that program for love, okay? You want peace, you don't want love. And there's people in here who fell in love, right? Then they got a divorce, right? And it wasn't a nice experience, so, you know, you want to be in peace, right? <laughs> you don't want to be in love. And I sit down on a panel, I was on a Strange Universe panel in uh, New York last, and they are all talking about love. I said, you guys don't want to have love? And they all look at me, the panel members are like, I said, you want to be in peace. <coughs> you know, it was kind of over their head a little bit, you know, but <laughs> anyway, you, you want to be in peace. So, any, any other questions? When you say that, sorry, yes. When you say that they sell you, what does that mean? They sell, oh, okay, yeah. Once the aliens upon themselves have their own agreements on how they want to use you, so they can timeshare you and typically we'll say sell you, just like you're a, you're a marketable piece, to other aliens who want to share time, uh, your space, you. Space this, change though. Yeah, well, the, they can steal your spirit, okay, or parts of it, pieces of it, and they can also steal part of your body. You could be on an alien timeline now where they're doing experimentations on you, and you never even know about it, and you have a pain in your body, you don't, don't even know where it came from. <coughs> so. I did that, but you say they you, you, okay, you sell, they sell you. What is that? What's the exchange between the selling? How? So it's just borrowing. Yeah, yeah, what they're doing is that they're probably getting something for having you. Maybe they're set up to have you in six months, we'll say. And somebody else has you right now and they want to get your body. Okay, so that's, it gets to be, you know, maybe more complicated than that. But you know, we're only talking about your emotional energies. And they also eat, eat humans. They, they, they eat you. So I won't get too much into that. It gets kind of freaky for people. We're talking about the physical body? Physical body, yes, huh? That's a lot of the rituals that you have seen. You know, uh, okay, what you see physically is, we'll just talk about, in a sense, what we probably all have known under some of the Mayans kill people, right? And so, as a person is dying, they can stop time. You know, they're in control of time. So they start to tear out the person's lungs or whatever, or heart, right? And the person's going through all this pain. They can stop that and put that onto a thousand timelines and have that energy from that one incident. So, any other questions? I, I can get into some healings too. I'd rather kind of switch it slightly, but uh, yes? How do you avoid having emotions, even if you're living in the present moment? Because we kind of process through... That's why I have an emotional clearing on my website. Okay. 
It's five dollars times your age. I give a fifty dollar discount to the expo. Uh, it clears basically two years out of your life every minute. So 15, 20 minutes, you're done. And that's what Jesus was doing basically, you know, two thousand years ago. So are those clearing past emotions or future emotions? It's oh, okay, good, very good question. Okay, so what you're dealing with right now is not. Okay, your whole past of your ancestors, your genetics is stored inside of you. So all those thoughts of all of your ancestors are with you. But you've only activated what came up in this lifetime up to now. <coughs> so when you do the clearing, it clears out this lifetime stuff. Now, like I tell people, they go, well, how do I stay clear? Do I have another process that's an add-on to the emotional clearing to stay current, which is called the unlimited clearing? But we'll say you didn't get that, okay? And that costs 50 bucks. You can go on it whenever you want to and get out your emotions. But, you know, if you had your emotional clearing and you moved out of L.A. and you went to some place, we'll say, up in the hills, and you lived there with the, uh, you know, the bears and the wolves and, you know, everything that is of nature, right? And you could have your food brought to you, no radio, no TV, you probably would not be abducted. So that's how, you know, what happens. So when you when you step into duality, then people will trigger you. What you have cleared out of you probably may not get activated over again unless one of your friends brought it up to you. And once most people get their emotional clearing, they look at their friends and reevaluate them, and then they really don't want to hang out with too many people anymore because it brought all that trauma to them. And then they recognize it. They don't want to go through that cycle again. So it takes you out of your program that you were programmed with at birth, that you activated, okay? So the unlimited is good for like you're, you're having a, a situation, somebody calls you up on the phone or they have one and they go, you know, my, my, my daughter broke her arm, you know. And by the way, that's probably going to affect you somewhat because you have a broken arm inside of you in your genetics and now you're going to have empathy for them. And right away, now you're on the broken arm timeline. When are you going to have a broken arm? Okay. Because they activated that. And your physical body will kill itself to get well. So it will eventually have a broken arm. Yes? So, are you saying that pretty much everybody has been abducted and then possibly... Everybody, every 10 minutes, everybody is abducted, yes your recognition of, of, of knowing about it now is that when you lose your keys, lose your car, get misplaced, like, you know, what am I doing in the store? Uh, another thing, cars, how many in here have drove, <coughs> driven the car on a freeway and we're on a street and you look in your mirror to turn into the next lane, nobody's there and you start to turn and all of a sudden the horn honks. Yeah. There's somebody in that lane. And they weren't there, you know, five seconds. <coughs> Or you're walking down the road and that happens, you know, or down, down you know, a sidewalk or something else when somebody comes up behind you and they weren't there. Well, they just got dropped into your timeline, okay? So that hologram, right, had a mix with your hologram and they came right into your timeline. What's the logistics of that? <laughs> of, you know, billions of people Every 10 minutes, it's like some kind of a... Yeah, it's, it's called a gigantic step, computer right? program. Yeah, this is automatically like shuffling data around. Mm-hmm. Living up your emotions. Would you describe it as a psychic vampirism kind of pyramid network? Where it's like a vamp yeah. many <laughs> beings are channeling beings from other beings, but then also channeling it? Yeah, yeah. The only thing that's keeping me alive here is that I have hope for the aliens. And so, do you, do you, they want to get out of here too. There's somebody, there's a pecking order, right? And they're all being pecked upon. <laughs> Are we at the bottom of this pecking order? Are we at the bottom? Uh, I don't know, you know. So, how much time do we have left? It's 6.30. 6.30, wow, that's 18, great. 18 minutes. 18, okay. What's, uh, you have a question? How do we protect ourselves? I used to ask our Archangel Michael, now you say that it's yeah, yeah, don't, don't don't ask for help outside of yourself. <coughs> if you're asking an alien for, for a favor, or you could go to church, if you go to church and you pray to God, well, what's God, you know? 
you know, most people, if you're a Christian, you think you're praying to Jesus. Well, are you really? Who's the light of the darkness, Jesus? Uh, and, and that's created through all, all churches. So who created the moon? What's that? Who created us? Your, your initial creation was from source. Then the aliens took you over, maybe tempted you, even like in the Bible, sort of, you know, we got tempted to have darkness. And, uh, you know, you may not like to be in non-judgment all the time. Some people may want to have that pain to push them forward or something, you know. But when you're, when you're in peace, you're just in peace. And you don't, you're just observing everything. You're not really interacting with the emotions of what that's bringing to other people around you. So, so you're out of the movie. What, what is source? Source energy is an energy that uh, is non-judgmental energy. So it's just an energy. It's an energy, and you, you can't go to it because you're contaminated. But if, if we were to go to it, what is source? It's just, uh, I'll, I'll bring in an energy of source to you. In fact, uh, what I'll do is bring in uh, uh, since you mentioned Archangel Michael, I'll have you all bring in your own Archangel Michael that you had, in your teachings or whatever you've had in the past, maybe you work with Archangel Michael or another Archangel. So, why don't you bring it in right now, then I'll bring, you, bring in the source energy of that particular life form, that being that may have only been here for five minutes from source energy, because they have to take physical form in order to be here some type of form, okay? So, you guys are ready? So, bring in whatever you need to do to bring that in, then I'll bring in the other one. Let me know when you're all ready. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'll bring in the source energy of that energy, so I'll count to five to do that. One, two, three, four, five, there. Feel the difference? Yeah. light and you can't judge light when you look at light there's no judgment there there's no vocabulary there's no stuff there's no density yes would you speak to uh, what you because it seems that you're describing benevolent forces what about benevolent forces is there is there a spectrum and, and both sides of the beings that we may want to co-create with and entangle timelines in order for creative purposes? No, you, you never want to get on timelines. Then you're in darkness. And the light <laughs> can never judge you, so it can't really do anything for you. It's all up to you. You have free will, free choice, and light. So you're, yeah. just, you're just offering a more a direct path towards the light through yeah. your... Mm -hmm. ideology. Yeah, I'm connecting you to your own spirit. That's what the clearings do that I have on my website. And each time you do a clearing, you're getting more of your spirit energy back to you, as much as you can get back. Because your, your, your emotions kick your spirit out of your body. And then, if you're lucky, that same part that left you came back to you. Maybe your spirit went outside of your body and the alien stole it. So it gets to be, you know, kind of dangerous, kind of scary when you start realizing that your spiritual practices that you have learned and dealt with and probably have, you know, teaching credentials on something <laughs> put you further down that rabbit hole. And that's why you're still here. Remember the mind to heart drop. Very, very simple. Uh, yes. Could you speak a little bit about spiritual ascension and the direction the planet's going? <coughs> spiritual ascension. Well, you want to get out of here, so you need to get your spirit, if you want to take your body with, okay, you need to get your spirit inside of your body. So ascension is basically two things. One is to have your spirit leave here, go back to source, and not be hooked up to aliens, and the other one is to have your body ascend with your spirit. So, your body 
somebody's been stuck here genetically for a long time would like to get out of here. And the, the problem that we're having, at least right now, as I'm talking this minute, okay, is that this planet will no longer be in existence at ascension. Ascension will happen. The Earth sphere is not going to rematerialize this blueprint in the next, say, 2,000 year cycle, okay? Now, the people that believe in the God energies and the timelines and everything else in duality, they will be abducted and taken to a fabricated Earth planet like this one here. They don't ever know the difference. And if they get too far into the dark side universe, then they'll be lost forever. The only reason why the Earth spirit came back the second time, well, well more than that, but since the time of Jesus, that was the main ascension point that people leave here. And the Earth spirit was going to not materialize the Earth ever again. So what you have is you have uh, you have light that created everything. So this is a light planet, even though it's controlled by aliens. Okay, but it's still a light. And when the light gets turned off then this planet no longer can exist because there's nothing feeding it. It's like the power switch is turned off. And the darkness leaves and the light collects all light fragments, okay? So at that point, it's darkness. Well, the people that believe in the, these false things will be taken with those false identities and belief systems to another planet in the darkness and the real one won't come back again. So what they did is they, the aliens, when the Earth got re-energized again, because the Earth spirit said, gee, nobody ascended, basically. So they said, we'll give them another 2,000 years. So they got re-established in life, and then all the aliens brought all the people back here again to have another 2,000 year cycle to steal your spirit energy and your source energy out of your body. There's a movie, uh, Older is District 9, you may have seen it. Now, that's a good movie to watch, all the aliens suck out stuff, it's a spider looking thing. That came out the same time as, uh, uh, no, no, number nine. Number nine, and then you have District 9, both at the same time. So, number nine was like a little cartoon thing. District 9 is when the aliens had, had the cat food in the can. And that, now it'll be human food. You probably have, you know, you have. Maybe Japanese male, Japanese female, right? And you know, maybe uh, you know, whatever. You can get races and different cans of different sexes. Yes? Could you talk a little bit about people that are um, born with um, like uh, autism or Asperger's or attention deficit disorder? And how that relates? Uh, I don't have that much intel on that, okay? okay. It's probably from the nanotechnologies. Yes? Will you explain the creation light ship and why does it only come under 2,000 years? Why isn't it just one Okay, that's years? a good question. So you may say, what, why does the source come here every 2,000 years to save the people who are in misery for 2,000 years, right? <coughs> it's a very good question. <coughs> it's because you have free choice, free will. <coughs> you have the, the choice to drop into your heart to live in the now, to enjoy the beautiful planet here. It's not sources of energy how you choose to use mind energy. It doesn't, you can't sell, you can't do that, you know? So what I have somewhere around here, I have a, a card which will give you $10 off a light infusion chamber session. So it's only 10 bucks. So if you want to use that, you can uh, at the booth. Booth is 202. <coughs> so at least go in that chamber once to feel what it's like to have light codes put back into your body from source energy. <coughs> So it's very nice. What else do I have here? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah. Probably over I've probably a couple thousand archives on BBS Radio <coughs> on the internet, <coughs> bbsradio.com. Uh, I do four shows a week. And I will sell them on a live unless I'm like an asshole or something. So go there. I have tons of archives. You know, I started since the uh, end of 2006. 
and he just listened and listened and listened. And for most people, it takes about 10 shows to finally catch on to what I'm talking about. <laughs> because right away, you're going to realize that what you've been taught in your life is a lie. And it's hard to back out of that lie. The lie is working for you. And you keep doing the mind to heart drop, and you start, oh man, this really works. It's 15, 20 seconds, and I'm heart center. You know, but then you start really catching on to what source energy is. Otherwise, you're, you're going to be living more in the illusion. So, any other questions? Do you think marijuana is an invention of aliens? Now, I don't know, but it takes your spirit out of your body. So, if you, you know, if you look at people who've been smoking a long time, their eyes are glossed over, no more spirit. Yes? Where do you get your information from? I live in the moment. I have to come into your reality to figure out what you need and talk to you about it. What I talked about concepts that are what, so what I talked about ten, 10 seconds ago was out of my memory. Well, you could just be making things up. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is totally alien to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, just could you talk a little bit about the Christ consciousness and how that relates to all of this? And well, it's, it's a word, okay? There's key words out there that the aliens hook you up to. Okay. So those, that could be one of the key words. Okay. All you want to be is in the now. And, and you can be off of the now timeline by doing the mind of heart rock. So if somebody, you know, there's books out saying to be in the now, right? Well, they don't tell you how to do that, right? And they never tell you about the mind of heart drop like I teach people. Maybe the new books might, that'd be nice. <laughs> But uh, basically, and they, won't, they probably won't tell you to command your spirit, because the darkness won't want them to, to channel that information. So when you think about doing it, in fact, just think about it right now. Do the mind a heart drop with your thoughts. feel physically real. Okay, most most do it out loud. So I'm going to command your spirit. I'm going to command my spirit. Command my spirit. Take the thoughts in my head. Take the thoughts in my head. Drop into the, my heart. Drop them into my heart. Here we go. So 10, ten nine, nine, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, two and one. one. Ten, ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Ten. One more time. Ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. I'll ask you a question. Is there, when you're in your heart, can you remember what I talked about during this lecture? <laughs> no. It doesn't exist, does it? <laughs> well, it's the aliens. Oh, the aliens are here. <laughs> Next question? Yes. Um, every time that we've done this just now and we go down to one, I I don't really, you know, thoughts seem to go away, but I see just pictures, visions of things. Is that... Uh, what, is, what is it when you see, start to see? I haven't had anybody mention that to me before, to see something. So I don't know what that would be. Okay? Just keep doing it, things will go away. That's why I'm trying to hook you up. I don't want you to do that. Yes? Are you saying then to live in the now and that's what you're proposing? You have an empty mind? No, no, no. Your mind's not empty. Your mind's still completely running all those programs. Remember, you're programmed by the aliens, okay? But in all those programs, all the thoughts of your ancestors, all their programs, when you get it, when you disconnect from the, the thoughts, it's disconnected you, yeah, you actually take, take in what you're normally thinking at that moment, right? Because you're living on a timeline, right? And you have so many different ways of looking at a timeline. When you drop that into your heart, then you're off that timeline. And you have no thoughts about it. Then so you're in peace. Do 
charge water. the water. Let's charge some water here, okay? We'll put some light codes in here for you. <laughs> so here we go. So uh, I'll just count to five to energize it. This water will have light codes for what your body needs right now, this moment, okay? It may last for an hour for you with those <laughs> light codes because you're changing, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. And just let it sit for, here we go. It feels good. Taste your water. See if it tastes any different. And does it go down easily? Totally different texture. Different texture? Soft. Soft. Okay. So who didn't get what I'm talking about today? I don't have anybody leave. That's, that's really good. <laughs> yes. So what's going to happen to all of us and to the Earth? <coughs> well, it depends what timeline the people are on, okay. What I'm, the reason why I haven't left here is because I want to see the earth as a beautiful place, you know, like a rainforest. And so I want to see the rainforests that are here, other than the holograms of them dropping stuff in. Like I said, you, you, know, you probably have lost your keys, that's a different timeline, and you're abducted, and they can take and bring in things here that really isn't here. Uh, one of the ones was when they brought in the, uh, the thing in uh, Phoenix, Phoenix Lights. Okay, that, that, that was alien technology, and they you know, materialized the ship with that. But uh, the whole thing is, do they drop in stuff? Yes, they do. It is the room, in fact, you can just think, you know, we're, I'm hearing people talking on both sides here, but if they weren't talking, is that room really there over here? Are they going to waste the film footage? To do that, no. But when you walk into that room or start looking at it, then it will appear to you. Yes. Is there such a thing as good benevolent? Good aliens? Don't you ask me? Uh, typically not. Because they're, they're in duality. If you've heard about their name of an alien, they're in duality. Okay. Because they're in the same pecking order that you are. Somebody's probably feeding on them, too, like they're feeding on you. Remember, in lights, there's no, there's, no, there's no conversations, there's no judgment, there's no thoughts, right? So if these beings, like the Pleiadians, and the Arcturians, the Dromedans, and Greys, and whatever else, the Chilians, they're all using mind energy. And they're stuck in that mind energy system. Okay? Are they good? No. They're the same boat you're in. The suffering too. Know, like, the, uh, Just that they have more of a conscious of us and they can do things to us that we don't like. Just like we do to our cattle, the animals that we kill. Okay, that's it.